If you took No Man's Sky, a child version of that game, Skylanders, and added in a bit of Battlestar Galactica to the mix, then you end up with Ubisoft's latest space adventure. So get ready to release your inner Anakin child, and welcome to the Ruby Tuesdays review for Starlink Battle for Atlas. It's I have to admit I had a few reservations when going into this game, namely a couple of questions that worried me. Was the build up and play mechanic actually going to work and is it just for kids? Also do I have to buy all the add-ons to play the game and so on and so on. Thankfully all these questions were answered pretty quickly in the opening minutes of the game. Go show them what Starlink can do. Firstly, you should know that you don't have to buy the modular toys to play Starlink. The game is fully playable without them, but to me it is much less fun without the build and play mechanic. I should clarify that Starlink is no No Man's Sky in size. Atlas is a triple star system within the Pleiades cluster with seven very cool and fully explorable planets. Kyrite, the arid wasteland, Haven, the deadly paradise, Necrom, the decaying crypt world, Tundria, the frozen expanse, Sonatus, the tranquil utopia, and Vilus, the bacterial jungle. Also, Asha, the volcanic badlands. Much like No Man's Sky, each of these planets have plants and fauna to scan and collect. There is loot to find, side missions to be played apart from the main arc, and each planet has a plethora of adventure to be had, and the more you explore each world, the more you find. One of the concerns I had was the fact that you never get out of your ship. The whole story takes place either with cutscenes or in your ship, and I did wonder how long a game like this could hold my attention if I couldn't actually get out of my spaceship and explore these very vibrant and strange looking worlds. But thankfully this is where Starlink's strength lies, with the add-on modular toys, and this is where you can make the adventure yours. Your adventure is customizable. Ubisoft sent us the starter pack so we could see for ourselves, and after the initial bulkiness and the added weight that now sat upon my controller, I found that the interface between game and controller works very well. The basic premise of the game is this, you are part of a heroic interstellar team of pilots who need to free the Atlas star system from the Forgotten Legion. You ally yourself with factions in Atlas to push back the dynamic enemy threat of the Forgotten Legion, whose goal is to take over Atlas. The module add-ons allow you to defeat enemies with unique builds, but it's so, so much more than that. The build itself is innovative. I actually put on a missile backwards or the wrong way on and found that my ship kept firing backwards, which actually saved my behind a number of times without me knowing it. I thought at first this is going to get tedious very fast, and well, you're basically changing your character and build repeatedly for whatever situation you find yourself in. For example, some enemies can be defeated by a combined attack of ice and fire weaponry or any number of variations as you progress through the story. Enemy analysis complete. Siege weaponry recommended. Even with the puzzles and side quests, you have to transform your ship and its attributes accordingly. However, instead of finding it annoying, I found that this drew me into the game much further. The modular toys are not just another gimmick to bulk the cost of the game and to get you to further spend your well-earned cash. At first glance, this could be the case, but as I played, I began to see just how much thought had gone into combination of toy and game. They've made it very immersive. Your ship in the end feels like your character. You build it, you control it, you do everything with it. You can upgrade it with special attributes to change it to suit your game style. You fight with it as if it were a playable character, and that's just it. It is. When you're on a planet, there is next to no difference to having your character be in some humanoid form or you being in your ship. You fight, collect, interact all the same way. Your ship even has a jump button, or very similar to one, and in the end, you can play as if you are the ship. Think of your ship like a transformer. You can control, uh, see what I did there. Sorry. I think families will definitely enjoy playing this game together, especially the couch co-op mode. I think young ones will definitely enjoy playing this and the young at heart will also sneak some time in to play the game. In fact, after this review, I may do just that. The space pirate in me just wants more adventure. I'm letting this, the adventurous youngling in me, rate this game and as such, Starlink Battle for Atlas gets a seven and a half of 10. Thanks for watching this review and for more space-filled reviews like this, please like, comment, subscribe and hit that bell. And remember, live long and Tuesday.